Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Let's Talk Purity podcast with Richard and Brittany Delamora. Uh, we're so excited that you're here today. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Edify.app. Um, you can check out Edify.app in your app store. It's just an amazing group of Christian podcasts. Also, thank you so much to everyone who has been sharing our podcast and sharing our book, which we released. Hello, a call to purity. If you guys add us, we are re- posting you if we see that um and so a call to purity has been out uh if you want a signed copy of this book uh it is available on lovealwaysministries.com otherwise it's available wherever books are sold on amazon on target barnes and nobles and wherever books are sold so just go ahead and check it out we really believe that this book is going to bless you you know 13 of the chapters are dealing with the condition of our heart because because and then there's one chapter that's on sexual purity but you know the bible teaches us blessed are the pure in heart for they will see god and so through this book it is our prayer um that you as you read through the pages of this book will just grow so close to god that you literally see him moving in every single area of your life um and so we're so excited for you to read this book um Also, you might want to pick up a copy for a friend. You know, we've been seeing orders coming in and people are ordering two, three and four copies because, you know, they've they've read through it and now they want to purchase them for their friends Um, because this book is truly we put our whole heart and soul into it. Like God, when God gave us the word and God gave us the revelation, like we ran with it and the the word that God had given us about this book has truly blessed our lives as well and so we know that it's going to bless yours um also so I created for those of you who want to grow closer just um have more communication with me I created a Patreon account it I release videos every Monday and Thursday for all access Patreon members I'm more responsive there with my private messages because It's a smaller community, so I can be. Um, So if you want to join our Patreon uh, family, you can sign up for Patreon at patreon.com slash Brittany Delamora. Okay, so today we have something very exciting for you on our podcast. Um, Our good friend Charlene Aaron, who works for uh, CBN News, she did an interview with us. And so Today, we're going to play this interview for you. It is all about a call to purity. We really believe that this interview is going to bless you and that it is going to bring you just some clarity on just what purity really is. Um, And so grab your journals. You can take some notes or your phone, wherever you take notes, and let this interview be a blessing to your life today. All right. We are live here on the Sela Network, everybody. I'm Charlene Aaron. And I'm super duper excited about tonight and the wonderful guests that we have with us tonight. You guys know I've been posting, 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 posting about this amazing book called A Call to Purity. Come on. Living a Lifestyle of Purity by Richard and Brittany Delamora. And they are with us tonight. I'm so excited. Welcome. Richard and Brittany to Salem Network. You guys are partners, so we're family. Yeah. How are you guys doing? So How are you doing? Good. We're so excited to be here with you. I, I, Michelle is already here. She's saying hello. Good afternoon. I'm Michelle. Uh, Ellen, watching from Carrollton, Georgia. Guys, let me just say, first of all, and I mentioned this in a little video that I posted. This book is so doggone good. I hate to see this. Yeah. This book is, I can tell that you guys prayed. Yes, every over, day. I can tell that you yeah. prayed over this book and we're gonna give people some time to come on in and, 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 and get on with us, but I am just so excited and I'm proud of you guys mm-hmm. because you. I believe this is a book that is for the now. Yes. I think, it's for, I think it's something that God really, really wants and is calling his people to. Yes. Purity like Absolutely. never before. Yeah. Amen. I, be- I believe that. And, and Richard, we were talking earlier mm-hmm. um, and we can get into this also a little bit later, but you were talking earlier about how during the pandemic, God really exposed. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I believe. Our hearts. Yeah. I believe Charlie last year. I, I truly believe that last year was a year of exposure. And I think God exposed <laughs> a lot of things that were in us, things that were going on in our world and our society today. 
And I believe more than ever, what God exposes, he tries to address. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this year, that last year, God was doing an exposing so we can address some eternal issues that are going mm -hmm. on in our hearts. You know, COVID-19 taught us to wash our hands. But one thing that it, it didn't teach us was to clean our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I believe that whatever we don't address in our heart, it will start to manifest in our actions. I posted that. Yes, I posted that from your book. That's right. Uh, yeah. So whatever you don't address in your heart, it starts to manifest in what? Maybe you watching porn, maybe you holding on to unforgiveness. Maybe you seem stuck in insecurity or stuck in a season of your life. And sometimes we often ask ourselves, why am I here? Or how did this happen to me? It's because you didn't address these internal issues in your heart. And I believe more than ever, the reason why we wrote this book called A Purity is because God wants us to address these areas in our hearts that we often overlook and we don't evade. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, you talked about how even the pandemic was a time of exposure. Yeah. Even look at all the churches that were shut down. Yeah. So God was saying, you know what? Get it right, people. Yeah. Get it. Get it. It's not about the building. Yeah. It's about your hearts. Your heart. And people people are sharing the video. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Amber. Thank you for being here, my daughter. God bless hey, you. Uh, hey, Amber. Give Hi, Amber. Amber. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Linda, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I love the fact that you guys are people of prayer. And Richard, if you wouldn't mind, yeah, just I prayed before we came on, but I want you to just really, really pray. Yeah, that God's spirit would just really minister to people. Yes, absolutely. Let's awesome. pray. Yes. Lord, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord of God. We thank you for this conversation, Heavenly Father. We just thank you, God, that this is not a regular conversation, but this will be an anointed conversation, Lord. God, we just thank you right now what you are doing in our hearts, Father. God, you're such a good God, a gracious God, because God, when you see areas in our lives that need to be addressed, you go and you tug it in our hearts so we can go and expose those areas in our lives to you, God. So I thank you, God, for an outpour of your anointing, an outpour of your grace, an outpour of your healing, God. And I just pray in the name of Jesus, God, that this conversation would be edifying, would be uplifting, but it would create this desire and thirst for hunger and righteousness, God, that we would be people of purity, God. So, Lord, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're doing. And then some, God, bless this conversation. And we ask this, Lord, in your name, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 And if you're just logging on tonight, I'm Charlene Aaron. You're watching the Salem Network. And I'm here with some wonderful friends and partners, Brittany and Richard De La Mora. You guys live in what part of California again? San Diego. San Diego, San Diego sunny San, San Diego. Yeah. Your book, you guys, A Call to Purity, Living a Life of Purity. Um, touch on why, first of all, let's hear a little bit about your story. You guys have an amazing story of how you came to Christ, how you came together. For those who may not know, give us your, your testimony in a nutshell. I mean, I was in a uh, group in a very broken, dysfunctional household, a lot of verbal and physical abuse. And I was searching for love in all the wrong places. And I ended up in the porn industry for seven years of my life. Um, it was in the porn industry that I actually encountered Jesus um, and eventually gave my life to him. And I started going to church and there was this man who was <laughs> Shortly after I got out of the industry and he was just talking about like women, I have a word for you. I want you to know that you are a woman of God, that you are worthy of real true love. And that if your man isn't treating you as a woman of God, he needs to step up or step out because you are worthy of real true love and you are worth the weight. And when I heard that message, I broke up with the guy that I was dating, um, committed my life to the Lord. Uh, I vowed abstinence until marriage. Um, and yeah, that guy was this man right here. <laughs> <laughs> God is Who knew, right? God, God knew. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, this book is so uh, big on my heart as well because I've seen my life be radically transformed where I was in the adult film industry. I worked in escorting. I was a full-blown drug addict. And God 
radically transformed my life where I now evangelize the gospel. Um, we're both ordained pastors at our church and, you know, we have a beautiful uh, baby and beautiful marriage and all of this happened because we surrendered our lives to the Lord. And it was really yeah. like the steps of obedience, even when things didn't make sense. Like I remember flying on an airplane to go film a porn scene and the Holy Spirit telling me, Brittany, today's the day. Yeah. Like you need to quit the porn industry today and I would bless your life like no man ever could. And so it was taking that radical step of obedience. Like, okay, God, I'm just going to do it. Like I don't have money because not only did I have a pimp the last three and a half years, but I've been a drug addict. So I literally I have no money, but I'm just going to quit. I'm going to follow your voice. And so as I started following the voice of the Lord in my life, like he just continued to purify my mm -hmm. life. He continued to remove all my desire to be a, um, a sinful yes. woman out of my life. Like he just removed all of those desires. And so purity, it matters. Like, you know, the condition of our heart matters. The Bible teaches us that we need to guard our hearts because it determines the course of our lives. Yes. And so our book, A Call to Purity, it's not like a no sex before marriage book, though there is a chapter on sexual purity. Hello. That is Hello. I was going to say, I, I, yes, it is in there. Yeah, but that's not the entirety of the book. The book is really, there's 14 chapters and 13 of them about are about dealing with the condition of your heart because your heart matters. That's what God looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at our hearts. You preach it. The word, she's a preacher. I'm gonna throw it here. I'm telling you, that. you, girl, you could take the over. word contamination. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that quite a bit yeah. in the book. Yeah, talk about contamination and how it's so detrimental to yeah. our hearts. Mm -hmm. Well, the word purity means freedom from contamination. So, going back to what Brittany said, it doesn't mean no sex before marriage. Purity is not a young person thing, and purity is not a moment, right? Because often mm -hmm. people think purity is just like a moment of our life. No, no, no. Purity is not a moment. It's a lifestyle. And what we mean by that is that God wants us to be pure in heart so we're free from contaminations. In other words, we're free from anger, free from insecurities, free from idolatry, you know, free from bitterness, lust, or any hidden sin that could potentially contaminate and affect every area of our lives. Because like what Brittany said, uh, it's true that if we don't go and allow God to cleanse us from the inside out, it is going to affect everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And here's what I know, Charlene, that you know we can go and try to hide our hurt, but there's one thing we can't hide. We yeah. can't fruit. Because eventually, whatever's inside of you is going to come out yeah. of you. And wow. It's so imperative that we go and we ask God, God, examine my heart, examine my life. Is there's any, you know, hidden sin or if there's any contamination that's inside of me, please do an inward healing. Mm -hmm. So I can become the person you have called me to be. Mm -hmm. so that's the reason why it's so important that we aim at contaminations. And earlier in our conversation, I told you, um, Charlene, that whatever we don't address will start to manifest in our actions. That's right. And I believe- to walk it out. We got to work it out. We got to work these contaminations out because it's going to start affecting us yeah. and it's going to start affecting our relationships. It's going to start um, affecting our uh, relationships and our, and our marriage. It's going to start affecting our relationship with God and ourselves. That's why we believe more than ever that we need God to clean these areas in our heart because it matters. Yeah. There was one point in the book. There's so, I mean, I'm, I just got the book yesterday and it was, I'm just like highlighting it all over the, I mean, it's just being highlighted all over the place, mm -hmm. but there's one point in there where you're talking about um, Jesse's sons. Yes. And you're talking about David and how the Lord, you know, doesn't look on the outward. It looked like Eliab had the stature and he was, yes. he was the one, right? Mm -hmm. But the Lord says, no, no, he's not the one. Mm -hmm. No, this is not the one. Yeah. Talk about why they were not the one, Richard. Uh, they weren't the one because, like we said, going back to it, it goes to the heart. Mm -hmm. See, one thing is that God knows our hidden motives. Mm -hmm. God knows who we are at the core of ourselves. And what God is looking for is somebody that resembles him. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, especially when it comes to church, especially when it comes to our lives, we will give off the performance version of ourselves. Oh, that was so good. Yes. Yeah. And God is not looking for your performance. He is looking for your authenticity. And oftentimes we major in our gift, but we minor in our character. 
Can we have you all type that, please? I want you guys to comment this below. God does not need, he does not want your performance. Yes. He wants your authenticity. He does. Expound on that and why that's so important. Be, because God wants us to unveil who we really are. And I think oftentimes what happens is to us is we, we're so good at performing, especially this world today. We're so good at performing. When we put on our Instagram photo, make sure that we have the perfect filter, make sure it looks right. And it's cool. It looks amazing. But the only problem is outwardly it looks good, but God knows our hearts. And the thing that set David apart was his heart. His heart beat differently. There was something different about his heart. He wasn't a man who harbored hurt. He wasn't a person who harbored jealousy and hatred. Scripture even teaches us that he goes and, and feeds his uh, brother, uh, I guess we would call it pizza, some bread and cheese. He was still serving. <laughs> so let's pick up there. He wasn't a person who was entitled. He didn't say, oh, I'm king now. Y'all got to serve me. No, he had a servant's heart. Hmm. I believe more than ever, Charlene, if God is going to use us in incredible and tangible ways, the Bible says that he wants to use us as a special utensil, okay, uh -huh. for every purpose for the master's use. If he's going to use us in every way possible, there's one requirement he's looking for, purity of heart. Wow. How's your heart, friends? Wow. How's Matthew your heart? Five, eight. Absolutely. Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. Your heart will give you access to open doors, but your heart could also hinder open doors that God has for you. Wow, wait a minute. Hold on. That's another moment you guys need. To... <laughs> like I said, there's so many anointed insights. Your heart will give you access to open doors, Yeah, but, but it have... can also hinder open doors from opening for you. Yeah, when your heart isn't right. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important, you guys, to ask God to get in his presence to clean your heart. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, these areas in your life, it will start to hinder how God uses you. And it will affect your life all around. Brittany, you guys also talk about how when we walk in purity, mm -hmm. we see things more clearly. Yes. Amen. Yes, that is true. When we walk in purity, it's like when you're think about like when your heart is contaminated, you don't see things the way that God does, because just like you brought up Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Right. So there's something about walking in purity that unveils you, that allows you to see everything so much more clearly. Like even in um, when we were talking about with sexual purity, for example, we were talking about how when you operate in lust, like people say love is blinding, right? But mm -hmm. love isn't blinding. Love is revealing. It's lust that's blinding, oh, right? Wow. Oh, that's when we oh. walk in lust, when we walk with these impurities in our heart, it robs us of discernment. And that's why it's so funny because you could jump into a relationship with someone and you are intimate with them very quickly. And all of a sudden, all the red flags that are there, you start to reason, right? Like God's trying to show you red flag, red flag, red flag. And you're like, oh, you know, but when things are good, they're good. Or uh, like, oh, but maybe he's the one for me and I don't want to yeah. walk away from my soulmate. So He'll get better. Like all of these things. And I've lived that life. Like everybody uh. before Richard I was intimate with. So I know like how it robs you of discernment. I've stayed in relationships two years longer than I should have mm. because I knew after about a year I should have left the people. But because you are not pure, you ha you're robbed of your discernment. And so, yeah. You say this too in, in the book, sex mm -hmm. outside of marriage yeah. makes it difficult to leave a person that is no good for you. Yeah. Sisters, hear this right here. Mm -hmm. Sex makes it difficult to leave a person that is no good for you because you become one with a person you're not called to be one with. Sex is binding. I know so many women and men too, but a lot of women yeah. are with men. They're intimate with them. They come, the women come to church. They say they love God, but they're tied to these men who are no good, who don't treat them well, yeah. Brittany, yeah. because of this right here, this sex yeah. 
Yeah. Talk to them. Help the sisters out, Brittany. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you, sex within a marriage is beautiful because it binds you to your partner and it bonds you with them, right? But that is in marriage. Outside of marriage, all it doesn't just bind you, it blinds you. And so just like I said, when God is trying to show you all of these red flags and he's trying to show you that, you know, he has someone so much better for you that you don't have to put up with the emotional abuse or the lack of trust issues. You don't have to put up with any of that. Like God has somebody that is going to love you the way that he does but you'll settle when you start having sex outside of marriage you'll settle with a person that god never called you to be with because mm -hmm. you're being intimate with the person and so it's binding you to that person and it's blinding you from seeing all of the red flags wow it is so you see people they break up with the person they go back to the person they break up to, with the person they go back there's this back and forth because this mm -hmm. is, is, is that sex, it's binding. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. I, I, mm -hmm. I've been there, Lord have mercy. It's like, I know this person is no good for me, yeah. but yet I keep running back to this person. They don't treat me well, they don't honor me. And you also say that if a man is not treating a woman like she's a woman of God, then she needs to show him the door. She needs to say, yeah. this is the exit sign. Yeah, absolutely. And that yeah. takes recognizing your value and worth to know mm -hmm. what you deserve and what you don't deserve. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. it's like, yeah, to know what what it means to be a woman of God, you have to catch that revelation in the presence of God to understand how valuable and worthy you are. It's like before Rich, I attracted all of these men that could never love me the way that God loved me because I didn't even love me the way that God oh, loved come me. On. So a revelation so of his love for me. And so, so I subconsciously attracted what I thought I deserved and that was nothing that God had for me. And so you have to first catch the revelation. So because when you see yourself the way God sees you, you won't tolerate any anything less than what God has for you. Mm, 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 mm. And Richard, you also said, I loved your stories as well in the book. You talked about how, you know, um, sometimes men sleep with women yeah. to try and fill a void yeah. within them or to fill some loneliness yeah. within them. Yeah. And you have no intentions mm -hmm. of committing to this woman. Yeah, right. so true. Talk about that. And men do yeah. it all the time. <laughs> yeah, all, we do it all the time. And I mean, that hit me, especially for me. I was going through a really rough season in my life. And I thought if I can go get a relation, get into a relationship or if I can go mess around, that it's going to just fill this void in these areas in my heart. But it didn't fill a void. It actually grew that void and it actually grew this hurt and pain inside of me that, that needed to be fulfilled. But when you're dealing with impurities, you'll try to fulfill it in a wrong way because mm. the only person who can fulfill that void is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when I had, when I caught that revelation and I understood that everything changed in my life. And I think oftentimes we try to do things the wrong way. I mean, we try to, yeah, we try to do things the wrong way, hoping that it's going to give us the right solution. And that just never works out. So I believe more than ever, if there's voids in our heart, we need to go to that person who could fulfill your heart and to clean and heal your heart. And that is mm -hmm. Jesus, Charlene. It's nobody but Jesus. And, and the fact that you guys talk about there are these lies yeah. that we believe. Absolutely. You know, like it's not, if I'm sleeping around, like it's not going to affect my relationship with God. Yeah. You know, it's going to deepen my love, enrich my love life, all of yeah. these things. And these, are, these are nothing but lies from the enemy. Absolutely. And people fall for them. I fell for them for a long time before I got married, you know? Absolutely. I, I love that, man. I love that chapter, by the way. And That's powerful. It reminds me a little bit, too, of like Sam, uh, Samson, you know, he's missing yes. Delilah. Delilah. Oh, nothing's going to happen to me. I could just break free the way that I always do it. You know, my anointing is not going to be hindered. The favor all my life is still going to be there. Woo. So we thought. Speak this truth, brother. So we <laughs> thought. And then what eventually happened? They found out his secret to, to his anointing. <laughs> and from there, the man Man, I, I, that passage just it, it ministers to me all the time because it teaches us that the Lord left him. It wasn't that God left him, left him, but the favor on his life left oh. him. Why? Because you were crossing boundaries that you should have never crossed. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that God creates boundaries for every single one of us to bless our lives. Because boundaries not only bless our lives, but they protect our lives. Mm -hmm. I believe more than ever that the enemy tries to throw these lies in your head. You can cross the boundary and nothing's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just do that in a practical way. Why don't you go outside right now? 
Don't stop on a, on a red light. I mean, <laughs> you keep going forward. I'm pretty sure you're going to get a ticket or something's going to happen to you. If you don't get killed, that's right. Exactly. Funny that we could obey that practically outside, but we don't apply that when it comes to the Bible. We don't think that nothing's going to happen to us. It's not going to affect us, but it's a lie from the pit of hell. It is going to affect your relationship. It's going to bring insecurities in. It's going to affect your heart. It's going to affect your marriage. It's going to affect the anointing and the favor that is on your life. Yeah. We have to stop listening to the lies of the enemies. And we need to stay tuned into the word of God and yeah. listen to his truth. This is this is another powerful statement that you guys make in the book that Satan never serves you a dish yes. that you don't have an appetite right. for. Absolutely. Come on. Satan does not serve you a dish that you don't have an appetite for. What does that mean? Well, first Peter five, eight says that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion looking to, for somebody to devour. Right. So one thing about lions is that lions are pretty wise when they hunt and they do two things. Number one, they're always looking for the isolator, but number two, they're always looking for the weakest link in that uh, pack of animals. And whenever they find the weakness, the weak one, what do they do? They go after it. Mm -hmm. And could I tell you here today that the enemy does the same thing? He's looking and waiting like a lion, looking for your weakness. And you know what happens? Surely when he figures out your weakness, he sends an advertisement towards your way. Yeah. When he finds a weakness, he sends the advertisement. This is the reason why I said um, that the enemy will never serve you a dish that you don't have an appetite for. So when he finds your weakness, he serves you the dish. Mm -hmm. And it's always to your liking. Mm -hmm. And every, everyone who's watching here today, you know where your weakness is. Yes. Yeah. For me, he's not going to go and try to, I don't know, uh, mess me up and uh, affect me in some type of music or some type of way. That's not going to affect me, but he might know a certain way to try to come at me with my temptations. Mm -hmm. So the enemy is always going to serve you a dish that you have an appetite for. Yeah. And isn't it interesting, Charlene, that the moment that, I don't know if you've ever did this, but when I go on a search, maybe for like a pair of shoes or something, I've noticed that when I click on it, it follows me everywhere I go. It's everywhere. Everywhere, right? Everywhere. Media and everywhere. Are you stalking? It's like, is this real? Yeah. Oh my this is right. It's on Instagram. It's on Twitter. Then, then you're on a website. It's on Instagram. It's everywhere. <laughs> but funny, the pop-ups and the advertisements are following you based on what you're clicking on, based on what you're liking. The enemy mm. is the same way. Yeah. He starts sending you the ads everywhere you look, everywhere you go, because he's waiting for those weak moments in your life. Yeah. Maybe the moment where you and your... Mm. Or maybe it's a weak moment where you're tired and you're fatigued and you say, oh, okay, let me throw an advertisement, you know, their way. And let me get them the way that I got Esau. Let me give up their birthright. Let me let me just throw something out there. Let me kick a, a cook up a little bit of stew for you. Mm. you eat it up. And while you're eating, you're slow, your life, you're slowly giving up everything that God has for you because you are eating the wrong thing. Friends, I believe more than ever, we have to be wise and we have to watch our cravings because yeah. the enemy will keep serving you a dish that you have an appetite for. Absolutely. Brittany, you know, you, as you mentioned, your testimony is so powerful and how God delivered you from the porn industry. I mean, you are a walking, talking trophy of the grace of God and the mercy of God. Talk about, there are so many people in the body of Christ, men and women, yeah, who are addicted to pornography. Mm. Yeah, it's it's the statistics are absolutely alarming. I mean, the statistics show that seventy percent of men in church watch porn. Um, it says seventy percent. Seventy percent habitually watch yeah. porn. By the way. Um, and then it says that 30% of women in church watch porn mm -hmm. and that 50% of pastors and leaders watch pornography. And so 50% of pastors and leaders yeah. in churches. So that's why you don't hear about this issue very much because most of because half the pastors and half the leaders are battling with it. So they probably like, how are they going to come up and talk about something that they don't have victory over? Ooh. And so this Ooh. is, 
Paul's enemy's tactic is because if he could get the pastors to struggle, then the pastors will never talk about it. And then everybody in the congregation has to suffer silently because nobody's talking about it. So they think that it's an isolated incident, mm -hmm. that they're the only ones that just can't stop watching porn, that they're the only ones that have this habit that they want to kick, that they can't stop because nobody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. It's sad. And so, yeah, it is. It's not an isolated incident. Most people are struggling with it and it, yeah. and it's made its way. It's infiltrated its way into the church. And it's something that we have to take a stand against. We have to say, I'm not okay with it. Like we have to say like, I've been walking around this mountain too long. I am sick and tired of being addicted to, to pornography. I'm sick and tired of being yeah. a, uh, a slave to sin because when Jesus Christ died for you, he died so that you could live in victory, oh, not so that yes. you could be a slave to sin yeah. he wants to set you free yeah. and so if you're not seeking jesus on a daily basis that's the probably the number one reason why you're still struggling right now if you yeah. are jesus every yeah. day, it could be accountability it could be the type of people that you're surrounding yourself with um but there is freedom from pornography like you don't have to stay a slave yeah. i would say like if an ex porn star could practice purity, anybody Come on, can practice sister. Purity. You can do it. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Let my story give you hope. You so, can do it. So what are some practical steps? What are I know that you're saying, you know, if you're not, first of all, if you're not a Christian, if you're not in relationship with Jesus, if you're not in fellowship, because you can say you're a Christian all day long and you don't pray, you don't read your word, you're not studying to show yourself approved, and you're not communicating with God and you're not opening your heart yeah. to him. Yeah. That that's where it starts. That's yeah. where the freedom is going to begin. Yeah. When you surrendering yeah. because you say that surrender is an easy word to say. Mm -hmm. but a hard word. But it's a obey. hard word to obey. Yeah. 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 What are some steps Richard for people who are struggling with pornography? I mean this 50% of pastors I did not know that. Yeah. And the first thing that I would is, I would is say what I would say is I would address it, address whatever's in your heart, and don't avoid it. You know, oftentimes when it comes to porn, the very first thing that we can do is avoid why we watch it, and we never go down into the depths of our heart and ask ourselves this question: Why am I watching porn? Mm, that's good because, because mm. all porn is is an escape. Yeah, it's something you're avoiding. So you might be saying, well, the reason why I watch porn is because my wife and I aren't intimate with each other. And since we're not intimate with each other, I would rather watch porn than commit adultery. And I would say, wow. And I'd say, okay, okay, I understand that, but let's go a little deeper. Why aren't you too intimate with each mm -hmm. other? Where did the fire stop? Yeah. And I would say, is it is it probably because you guys aren't communicating with each other? Is there some contaminations that we need to address? Maybe some hidden hurt, maybe some unforgiveness, Is there bitterness, bitterness. What's going on? Because, you know, intimacy doesn't begin in the bedroom. It begins outside of the bedroom. Yes. And Ooh. I think what happens to a lot of us is that we start um, giving excuses to places in our lives we should start where we should start investigating. So the first thing I would say is this is I would go back and address these issues in your heart and I would confess it to uh, somebody that you know, you know, a personal accountability partner. Why confessing it to someone? Well, because the book of James teaches us that when we confess our sin to one another, then we'll be healed. So there's two areas of confession. We confess to God so he can forgive us, but we also confess to people. So then there's that healing that takes place. So I would really consider you to have some accountability partners around your way. Another practical real tip is run from sexual sin. <laughs> Flee. Simple. Flee. It is like the only like uh, uh, sin in the Bible where it says run from it. It doesn't run. say entertain it. It doesn't say talk to it. It doesn't say why don't you just sit there and think about it. No, it says run from it because it affects your body. Run from it. I love what Joseph did. The Bible said that Joseph didn't stay in the room when it came with Potiphar's wife. He ran. Charlene, I really believe the reason why people are being bound to pornography and bound to lust is because they are staying in rooms that they should be leaving. Wow. What rooms is God calling you to leave that you're staying in? Jesus. And oftentimes 
we don't listen to the voice of God. We listen to our feelings. We block the discernment. We try to quench the Holy Spirit, and we find ourselves being bound. Run from it. But the Apostle Paul says something great, and this is the last tip that I would give to every single person. Don't just run from sexual sin. Pursue righteousness. Yeah. Mm. Here's the reason why. Don't run, run, run from, but run to. Run to. Because mm -hmm. running's half the battle. But if I ask you right now, hey, buddy, where are you running to? <laughs> that you got to give me an answer because oftentimes we're running, we're running and running, running, but we're running away, but we're not running to something. Jesus. We have to run to Jesus. Only we can defeat this type of sin because of Jesus. It is not because of our strength. It is not because our gift. Only Jesus can heal us of these areas that we're battling with. We need to pursue Christ. Psalm 119.9 says, how could a young person stay pure? How can we stay on the path of purity? It says this, by obeying your word. Hmm. If we want to stay on the path of purity, we need to obey God's word. We need to get wow. it. You know, what do you say to Christians who have lost the fire? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? There, there's this, this sense, I don't feel like praying. Uh, I, you know, it, it's more of a burden than a yeah. blessing to yeah. pray and to worship God. What, how do they get back on that right track? I mean, you gotta, you gotta persevere. Like I know sometimes you can feel like, you know, I've lost the fire. Maybe I've lost the routine of things, but that's the powerful thing too, about being within a community is that you can talk th these things out with a friend that is in the faith. Um, and in those times persevere, you know, I went through a really hard season um, shortly after giving birth where I had taken on this mega ministry and had no time for maternity leave. And I was battling, let me tell you. And I was, and I'm, I rarely, get anxiety or anything like that and during the season I was getting anxiety and one day I woke up and I was like I am so tired of having anxiety every day and my daughter I put her in her high chair she was eating food I put some praise music on and I started rebuking the spirit of anxiety I started rebuking the demonic attack because you have to realize is that if you've lost your fire that it's more than just your feelings it's more than Come on, Brittany Come on, it's more than just your emotions. There is something going on in the spirit that you need to take authority. God has given you authority mm -hmm. in Christ and you can rebuke those spirits. Yeah. And I tell you, as I was rebuking those spirits, like I had so much freedom that I didn't get attacked like that again. I felt just this weight get lifted off of me. And I was battling for months before I finally had that aha moment of like, I'm getting attacked demonically. I need to rebuke this. Yeah. And so sometimes you're stuck in it thinking like it's just you, yeah. but it's not just you. There are there are spirits that are attacking you and you need to take authority over darkness mm. because you're a child of God, you're a child of his light. That is such a confirmation because the other day the Lord spoke to me, you know, cause I said, I've been feeling so tired. Like this is, it's an unusual tiredness. It's not normal. And the Lord says it's a spirit, a spiritual attack. Absolutely. Just because you're tired, just because you don't feel like praying, just because you don't feel like studying doesn't mean that, you know, oh, it's just you. No, you are. There is an attack Absolutely. of the enemy coming against you right now. Mm -hmm. This this fatigue is a spiritual thing. Yeah, yep. it's a it's a demonic presence. Absolutely. And so that's a good word. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus and put yeah. some worship on, declare the word of God. The praise uplifts you. Like yes. Gets, come on, it gets you in the zone. I yes. think that's, um, that God is happening for us by, yes. uh, by Darlene Shack. Oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> you guys, I love the fact that you also dedicate time in the book to talk about the refining process. Yeah. Come on. Wow. Yeah. The refining process is so integral, so important because God wants to get the, imp the impurities yeah. out of our heart. But it's you say it's very important yeah. that we don't get out of the refining fire too soon. Yeah. Talk about that and why that's important. When we get out of the fire too soon, especially when they make jewelry, what happens, it lessens the value of the jewelry. So in the same principle, when we get out of it too early, we don't get the values that the valuable things that are in the fire that yeah. we need. So when we come out of it and we're getting launched into our new season, 
we don't go and possess those traits. And I believe more than ever that the refining process is imperative for every single one of us because in that refining process, God starts to cut things away and he starts to address things in your heart and he starts to go and work in areas in your mind and work in areas in your heart. So when you come out, you become fireproof because you've been tested and tried and you come out as gold. And I believe more than ever that we need to stay in that season and not get out of that season when we feel like it. Because yes. you know how many of you guys know that oftentimes that we're, when, when we are in a refining process, it's not easy. And sometimes we want to get out of a season too early. And my oh. thing is that mm -hmm. never get out of a season too early because you will lose all the valuable things that God has for you in that season. Yeah. Some seasons have certain lessons that only could be learned in that season. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you'll jump out of it. And then when you get to your next chapter of your life, you're not understanding it. Why? Because you didn't have the right tools that were required in this season because you jumped out of it too early. Mm -hmm. I love it in this process, Charlene, because God puts us in that fire. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a struggle. That's a struggle too. Just to hear, God, you're going to put me in the fire. Why? Because you can, you are going to see my uh, marvelous work at hand mm -hmm. when you're in that fire. And if mm -hmm. you need to know the God of fire, you need to be in the fire because God <laughs> will literally get in there and show you how wonderful he is. But that all happens when you go in those refining processes. And I believe more than ever that my wife and I would not be the people who we are today if we weren't refined. Yeah. It was the <laughs> if you cheat the process. Yeah, don't you? Yeah, you will repeat the process. Yeah, that's, that's what we true. said. And if you cheat, mm -hmm. yeah, if you cheat the process, you'll repeat the process. Yeah. And I believe more than ever, guys, that when we go in these refining times, they're trying times, but they're also a time of blessing. Because when you come out, you're going to thank God for putting you in that place because you're going to say, you know what, God, I needed that. Mm -hmm. I learned something new about myself that, that I couldn't see it in a season of comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't understand, you know, this person or I didn't understand, understand who I was, but. In this refining time, I was exposed and you started to show me who I am. So I believe it's very important that we stay in that process. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We don't like it. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. But it's good for us. Every yeah. single one of us. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I feel like I'm in a refining process yeah. mm -hmm. right now. Wow. A pullback yeah. season. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not comfortable absolutely but i know it's what god has for me yes. yes amen come on and we can't rush the process we can't cheat the process as you say yeah because we, we will repeat it yeah, absolutely it's like failing a test god's giving you a test yeah mm -hmm. and if you fail he's like you have to take it again yeah because he loves us absolutely yeah. he loves us and he wants us to get it right he wants yeah. us to pass the test yeah, yeah amen Amen. Guys, I want you to share any last points before you guys pray for the for those who are watching. Yeah, Amber says very uncomfortable, but it, I know it's the process that I need. Amen. Any questions you guys may have for Brittany and Richard, please type them in. Any comments, please type them in. Last points, Richard and, and Brittany, before we have you guys pray or address any questions. You know, one of the chapters that I really love in this book is called Who's in Your Corner? Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's really about friendships, you guys. And, you know, last this Sunday, past Sunday, I had the opportunity to minister to my church. And I really went in on our friendships and who we're around. And yeah. Charlene, um, there's a story that I share. And I share it in this book. You probably read it in chapter two if you, if you aim yeah. to that, ch that chapter. But it's about this poisonous dart frog. And this yeah. scientist was saying he did a study about the poisonous dart frog and he said in this study that the poisonous dart frog was never meant to be a poisonous dart frog and the reason why it was a poisonous dart frog is because of two things the environment mm -hmm. that it was in mm -hmm. and what it consumed but the scientist said something very interesting that blew my mind he said if you want to change the poison dart frog from it being a toxic frog to a healthy frog, all we needed to do is two things. Take it out of its environment and change what it's consuming. Charlene, when they did that, in less than three months, the scientists said that the frog was healthy. 
So much so that they were holding the one of the most poisonous amphibians in the world in their hands. And you can have it as a pet as long as you changed its atmosphere and you change what it consumes. I believe more than ever the reason why we're not walking in purity while we struggle with our past, while we struggle um, with our mindsets, while we struggle with our habits coming back is the people that we're around. We have negative influences who aren't good for us. People who are in our corner who don't push us closer to God, but they push us away from the things of God. And if we're not careful, we can sit there and give them our ear. And whenever you give access to, uh, whenever you give your ear access to somebody, they have the potential to influence your life. So my question, I would ask every single person who's watching here today, what are you consuming? If you start consuming gossip all day, if you start consuming bitterness all day, if you start consuming these negative words all day, you know what it does? It starts to get inside of you. And then you start asking this yourself this question, why do I desire things in my past? Why do I desire quitting? Why do I desire going back to the club? Or why do I desire these things in my life? It's because you have an ant in your ear. And I think what happens is we get fooled because uh, we get fooled by labels because oftentimes we say, well, my friend's a Christian. That's great. But just because they have the label doesn't mean they have the fruit. A lot of people who are good at putting labels, but one thing that we don't see that comes out of your life is how's your fruit? Friends, I believe more than ever that before we go and before we go and invest, we have to learn to investigate. This is why it's so imperative what Brittany was talking about, walking in purity because you see things clearly. Charlie, one of my prayers that I'm praying right now, and it's a crazy one, and I know it might seem simple, but to me it's not. It's God expose everyone around me who's no good for me. But also, when you do expose the people aren't who aren't good for me, give me the strength to be able to embrace it when I hear about it. Because how many of you know that it hurts when you know that when you thought there were certain people on your side and they weren't on your side? Because oftentimes when God starts using you and God starts uh, uh, platforming you, that certain things get exposed. And I believe in this last moment that I have with y'all, please be wise who you're around. Please be wise what you're listening to. Please be wise in what you're looking at. God is calling us to be pure, y'all. Pure in our heart. Pure in our mind. Pure in what we speak. Pure in our motives because our purity matters. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Satan doesn't want you to be blessed. He wants to see you bound. He wants to see you restricted. He wants to see you limited because he knows that there is power in purity. Because when you walk in purity, you walk in power. When you walk in purity, you walk in freedom. When you walk in purity, you walk in anointing. And friends, we believe that a blessed life comes from a pure life. So y'all... Let us walk to purity. It's a call to purity that God is calling us. Oh my God. God. I don't <laughs> mind. I'm sorry, y'all. Got the, the Lord have mercy. It hit me. Where my shoe? Hold up. Hey, let's go. Come on, somebody. Brittany. Yeah. Um, I would just say so. When right before we started writing this book, I had come across a scripture that was talking about the ceremonial cleansing of the Jews, and so I started researching what that meant. And they used to wash their hands before a meal, during a meal and after a meal, like that is their custom. And so as I was reading how the Jews wash their hands, God was speaking to me that in the same way, my people need to wash their hearts, right? And so what soap and water is to our hands, God's presence is to our hearts. And so if you're battling with unforgiveness or lust or bitterness or jealousy or anger, or you know, you're addicted to something, whether it be drugs or alcohol or food, like whatever it is that has a stronghold over your life, you will find freedom in the presence of the Lord. As your heart gets washed clean with his presence, you'll see that your life is just going to be made new, that you'll just be that new creation that he says you are. And you'll actually begin to walk that out. Come on. And so it's so important. And this book is going to help you get there. Our book, A Call to Purity, 
Um, this gives you tools that you need in this book will give you tools that you need to walk in freedom over everything that the enemy has you bound by and, and just to walk in, and to lead a pure life. And so we're so excited for you guys to read this Come book. On. It's available on lovealwaysministries.com, also on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles online and wherever else books are sold. Um, and if you guys get this book, would you do us a favor and tag us, like share your notes with us? Yes. We want to repost you. We want to yep. see how God is speaking to you and ministering to your life through this book. So we're super excited for you guys to get this book in your hands. You know, I've been flooding my timeline with quotes oh. from this book. Hey, and I will continue. <laughs> it is it is so good, so life changing. I want us to stay in the flow right now because I just feel like God feel like God really wants to minister to people through you guys right now. Yeah. So just as you feel led to pray and minister as the Lord leads you right now. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you so much for every single person tuning in now and who will tune in later, God. And we just pray right now that your presence would just overtake every ounce of their being, Father. We pray, God, that you would speak to them so mightily, so powerfully on a daily basis, Lord. We pray for a deep conviction that they wouldn't go one day without seeking you. And Lord, if there's anybody that is bound by the enemy, we just rebuke every demonic attack over their lives in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And we pray, God, that you would give them freedom, freedom over the attacks, freedom over the enemy, Lord, give them victory in their lives, Lord. And I pray, God, that as they seek you, Lord, that their hearts would just be renewed, that their strength would be renewed, that yes, their Lord. hearts would be purified, that their thoughts would be pure, God, and that you would just transform their lives, that you would bless their lives like no man ever could, that they would walk in your favor, walk in your anointing, walk in purity. God, if there's people that you're calling them to maybe even break up with, Lord, maybe they're in a relationship with somebody that is no good for them. Lord, give them the strength to break up with that person, Father. Reveal to them your plans and your promises for their life, God, that you have somebody for them that is going to love you, that love them the way that you do, Lord, that in you their life is blessed and that they don't have to stress out, worrying and wondering how you're going to provide, but that you're going to provide for them their every need and even the desires of their heart, Lord, that those will become their reality as well, according to Psalm 37, 4. So we just love you, Lord, and we thank you for what you're going to do through this book and in these people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I was just stuck in that presence. I am just... So good. Wow. I love you guys love so you. much. Y'all are just special. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you again for being with us tonight on the Sela Network. Again, you guys, please go get a copy of A Call to Purity living a lifestyle. It's not just a moment, but a lifestyle of purity. It's not just about sexual purity. It's that, but so much more. Richard and Brittany, God Love bless you guys. And thank Love you so much. And tag them guys, once you get the book and you're posting quotes, tag them in it and they'll repost you on social media. Guys, thank you. Love you. Love you we so much. Love you. And we'll be talking with you very soon. Actually, you guys are going to be on CBN with me on next week. Make yeah. sure you tune in to CBN Prayer Link next Tuesday. And I'll post information about that as well, guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. you. Love you. Love you. Thank you, Sean. All righty. Bye-bye. Because of a virus that attacked and hurt the world, we put much emphasis on washing our hands. But I'm here to tell you that there is a spiritual virus and it is attacking marriages, families, and young adults. And it's called impurities. In 2020, the world asked us to wash our hands, but God is also calling us to have clean hearts. The word purity means freedom from contamination. And in this book, we address things that contaminate our heart, such as lust, unforgiveness, bitterness, insecurities, idolatry, pornography, amongst other contaminations and how to get free from them. And that's exactly why we wrote this book, A Call to Purity, because God is calling us to be pure. You see, when you walk in purity, you walk in freedom. And friends, 
This book is just not a book. It's a mandate from God, and God is calling us to rise up and walk in purity.